Thank you, Dr. Morris, uh, for this opportunity to present our work, but also for the support that the Department and the Research Oversight Committee has uh, provided for our project uh, on precision surgery for pancreatic cancer using very targeted fluorescent intraoperative imaging. Um, so the problem with pancreas cancer, which all of us who uh, take care of these patients have faced, is that we um, are able to take them through very complicated operations, get them healed, get them onto chemotherapy, only to see several of them develop uh, distant or local recurrence early on after surgery, and even sometimes lose them uh, in the first year from surgery. So this is a curve from uh, um, a vo an overall survival curve, uh, showing data from uh, Sloan Kettering, uh, showing essentially the problem where you can see that even in contemporary series in, in the 90s and 2000s, we uh, can have almost a 30% failure rate with death after surgery, despite a successful operation for pancreas cancer. And we as pancreatic surgeons who have tried to really mitigate this problem by uh, using very sophisticated preoperative imaging, utilizing diagnostic laparoscopy, using neoadjuvant therapy to select out the patients that are gonna re really uh, progress early after surgery, but still this is a big problem for us. One thing that hasn't really changed is the way we do the surgery and the way we visualize the tumor during surgery. So in collaboration with uh, Dr. Eben Rosenthal, who is a nationally recognized expert in fluorescent guided surgery, uh, we try to use this technology for pancreatic cancer patients. And we've started uh, 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 one trial back in 2016 and the current trial in uh, about two years ago, where we use a specific antibody, uh, which is coupled to a fluorescent dye to uh, visualize the tumor and potential metastasis during surgery. So the concept is that the patient comes in three to five days before surgery and gets an infusion of this antibody, which um, binds to receptors on the tumor, but it's also labeled with a fluorescent dye. And then using near infrared cameras, much like the spy or other devices we use in the operating room, we try to, I'm sorry, to detect the tumor and see if we can see the tumor and the metastasis better during surgery. This is one of those devices we use here. And this is how the tumor would look like during surgery with a peripancreatic lymph node. Why did we choose a monoclonal antibody to EGFR? Uh, we, we tested uh, several pancreatic cancer uh, tumors. Uh, their lymph nodes positive or negative as well as normal tissue and pancreatitis. And we saw that there was uh, hyperexpression of this receptor in pancreatic cancer uh, tumor cells. And uh, several investigators have tried to use this therapeutically without success, but it's definitely a very good target for optical imaging. What if the tumor does not express CGFR? So there's about a 23% of pancreatic cancers that would not express this uh, receptor on their uh, surface. We did find that if we use the appropriate um, dose of the, uh, of the study drug, we could still uh, obtain significant fluorescent intensity. So this is a problem that we anticipated and we're able to overcome uh, with, with this data. Uh, so this is the, the trial, the, the, the latest trial we've been able to uh, perform again, with help from the seed grant uh, to pay for the clinical research coordinator. Uh, and we enrolled 11 patients that were planned to undergo surgery here at Stanford for this, uh, for pancreatic cancer. And this was a phase one dose escalation study. So we tried to assess safety, but also to find the maximum tolerated dose of the uh, study drug that would identify uh, tumors in the best way possible. These are data from, uh, regarding the toxicity, and you can see several grade one and two, uh, some grade three um, adverse events. Uh, um, I have to say, these are all patients that are, are most, mostly underwent Whipple surgery. So having some of these grade one and two um, adverse events postoperatively is really not uh, uncommon uh, and very rarely related to the study drug. So we definitely demonstrated that, that, that this tool is safe uh, and has a low toxicity. And uh, this is uh, uh, some pictures of how things look in the operating room and what the actual uh, optimal dose would be. So we tried a first cohort of four patients of 25 milligrams, uh, then 50 milligrams, then 75. So four patients in each cohort. And we saw that the tumor to background ratio, which is the most commonly used endpoint in this type of studies, was um, um, the highest with the 50 milligram cohort. And this is consistent with studies in other cancers um, uh, and, and we felt that this is the optimal uh, dose for, for this uh, uh, dye for pancreatic ca cancer patients as well. So our next uh, phase of the study, which is 
to study another 12 patients based on this uh, dose. Uh, this is the, the dose that we're going to use specifically. But beyond the primary tumor, we were able to identify metastatic disease. So these are some pictures of lymph nodes uh, that were identified. Obviously, this is a hard and sizable lymph node in the hepatic artery that, uh, again, all of us doing this type of surgery have identified. And you can see how it uh, fluoresces during surgery. Um, but most importantly, we're able to identify smaller tumors at the resection bed after removal of the specimen. So here's a portal vein skeletonized and it's being retracted with this vein retractor. You can see in the retropancreatic space some fluorescence that really caught our attention. And this is something we have we would have not, we would have overlooked if we were just using the standard um, imaging, which is just the surgeon's eyes looking at their section bed. This lymph node was resected and indeed was positive. It's just a sign of how surgery sometimes is not adequate in eradicating this disease. Uh, then we looked at this at uh, lymph nodes on ex vivo and found that there was significant fluorescence even with small sites of disease. So um, then we focused us the, at the lowest sites of disease that we could uh, detect. So these are some. This is a peritoneal metastasis uh, that lit up with fluorescence. You can see how it's nicely visible, and this is something that could have been easily overlooked uh, during laparoscopy with white light, uh, and it differ it's nicely differentiated compared to this area here, which is pancreatitis. So biopsy of both areas, so pancreatitis here, tumor here, and this was very specific. Um, we tried to identify liver metastasis with this technique, and what we saw is that the tracer is really picked up by the liver significantly, and what happens is we see negative contrast for liver metastasis. So this is another uh, uh, potential area to study uh, with this tool. Um, Looking at margins, uh, that's also something that caught our interest. And here is fluorescence at the margin. And this, this is the cat, as you can see, you can measure the margin. This is an example of a tumor positive margin. This is a, an example of a tumor negative margin. You can see the correlation with pathology. And what we found interestingly is that when we measured the distance of the tumor from the margin, even tumors that had when, when the tumor was 0.8 millimeters from the margin, it was not fluorescent. So this is very specific. This is actually very important because we define margin as less than one millimeter. So um, if a margin was at least a millimeter, then we would not see fluorescence at the edge of the specimen, which is actually pretty high definition. Another interesting area of where this um, research has taken us is the area of drug delivery. So um, again, this is a tissue block with a lot of fluorescence of a pancreatic cancer uh, uh, tumor deposit. And this blue uh, uh, Mason's trichrome stain here um, uh, stains the desmoplastic stroma. And, the, and convention, the conventional dogma is that this dense fibrous stroma around the cancer cells, which were stained with, with this H&E stain here, prevent chemotherapy or other therapies from penetrating into the tumor to treat pancreatic cancer. So the question is, was this antibody making into the tumor cells? And here's an insert of this um, a bigger picture here. You can see. Uh, the fluorescence in this cancer, so this is the so-called gland that the pathologist sees uh, when they're looking at pathologic slides. This is an additional light blue stain that shows the nuclei. And we can, uh, this is one way of showing that yes, the fluorescence is making into the cancer cell. And um, definitely drug delivery is one area of, of, of potential future proposals that this research has taken us to. Um, this is another interesting experiment that we did trying to identify the smallest size of disease that could be detected as being fluorescent. And we cut small pieces of pancreas cancer into sequential smaller pieces to try to see what is the smallest size of disease that could be uh, detected in comparison to normal pancreas and surrounding organs. So based on this data, our next step is to really apply to this um, funding opportunity announcement which we feel fits like a glove to what we're doing. Uh, this is part of the NCI's Cancer Emotion in Initiative and essentially is trying to bring highly sensitive imaging technology capable of det detecting very small tumors in vivo to clinical utility. So we're planning uh, an October uh, uh, 2021 submission. Um, uh, we're utilizing the uh, Grand Writers Workshop one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation um, uh, option that's, uh, again, uh, we're very, uh, for which we're very grateful for uh, to really optimize this submission. Um, again, uh, uh, this work could not have been done by the support from the Department of Surgery uh, and the Research Oversight Committee who selected this proposal. 
And of course, I'm uh, very grateful for all the mentorship I've received by Dr. Eben Rosenhoff, who again is a very, um, is, is our guru in optimal imaging. Um, several very hardworking postdocs in the lab, Gulan, Minkia, and Willa Minkia. And of course, our patients who really agreed to um, come in a few days before surgery, have a three hour infusion, and help us um, understand this disease better and find ways to um, uh, treat it in a, in a more optimal fashion. Thank you.